Yeah. All right, game number two, and uh, I guess we can only hope it's as interesting as that last game. It was on Oro Shipyard, so kind of similar to Dust Towers. Might, you know, play into looking similar, but in the bottom left, as the blue Protoss, it's going to be my Insanities, Petit Drogo. And his opponent in the top right-hand corner, we have the red Protoss player, the North American Hope. Give it up for Neeb. Almost forgot to give him his own camera spin. That would have just been embarrassing. Yeah, wiggle, wiggle, come wiggle, on. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, okay, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. We're good. Wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> is that what your camera spin sound effect is? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah, apparently. I'd be an awesome camera director. Wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> so, uh, this... Okay, that last game is sort of strange, and I'm, I'm dying in anticipation to see... Is that just a one-off for Petit Drogo? Because I, I sort of feel like it may be. Mm hmm I would have to, like, assume so. You know, like I said, Orbital Shipyard is a bit like Dust Towers, you know, the, those kind of quick, easy thirds. <laughs> um, but it's it's not exactly the same, right? You have Back Rocks, okay. another option. You know, you can split the... You can kind of go left or right on this map, where Dust Towers is really only one direction into their main bases. All four bases, actually. <laughs> Um, four base is not as easy on Orbital Shipyard, so... And it's just, like, Neeb, he was very close to pushing before the carry count was too much. Like, imagine if he knew and predicted that was happening, and he was constantly on the scouting, I mean... And he just says, okay, I know what I did wrong, let me perfect that, and psh, there's my there's my win. I think Drogo is a good enough player, for sure, to throw that out again, but I don't think mm -hmm. right after. Like, maybe in game five, but not game one and two. <laughs> Yeah, it seems a little bit risky. I'm I'm still trying to think through, and of course, I'm not going to lie. I'm not the grandmaster player that can look at that build and say, here are the specific timings where he was hyper vulnerable and he'd be, you know, really would fall victim to such and such build. I'm not going to pretend like I have that kind of depth of knowledge or anything. Uh, but I will say that it it is a very odd build, and I could see there potentially being a lot of vulnerabilities, especially with, like, maybe a big ground attack that hits early enough as like maybe like a mass adept attack even uh where you're all you got really is void race to deal with the uh adepts which yeah they'll eventually clean up the adepts but not very quickly yeah definitely a little bit of uh different openers here stargate for neeb twilight council for drogo and he did hide this probe over here it'll probe mm. uh okay well no pylon going down over there but we do have dark shrine coming up in the main base of Petit Drogo. Petit Drogo also going to be able to deny that Adept Scout for at least a little bit, as Neem doesn't seem to want to uh, immediately move in. And uh, I think we might know what that uh, probe was for on the other side of the map. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, Neem really wants to get Ooh. a scout behind, but that's just not going to happen with his Adept being covered. Yeah, uh, Neeb also going for the Phoenix opening rather than uh, going for an Oracle or anything. And generally, when I end up seeing a Phoenix, I always think in a PvP, like, okay, you're opening a Phoenix because you're a little bit afraid that your opponent also opened up Stargate, which, I mean, Petit Drogo opened up Stargate in the last game, so not a terrible guess. But uh, usually I think of it as a safety thing of, I want to deal with that, or maybe even a War Prism harassment uh, coming in. Hmm... Yeah, this is, I mean, he, at least he has something, which is hard not to have something. You know, everything gets you detection mm -hmm. from Protoss, but, you know, he can get an Oracle for this, this these DTs, but it's going to be surprising. Um, of course, he doesn't want to quite mm -hmm. show his Phoenixes, so it's not like he's going to be on a hurry to send that out to Scout. It's just staying at home right now. He's trying to get a third base, and that's just going to increase the area in which he actually has to defend. Drogo doesn't have a, lot, uh, mm -hmm. a ton of money, so it's only one DT. If he waited to, like, two or three DTs, he could do so much damage but just sending in one is going to, of course, alert Neeb to this, and he shouldn't take game-ending damage. Yeah, immediately dropping down a robotic facility. Gonna have to pull some of these probes, lose a little bit of mining, but uh, the Oracle should be able to get out in time, even if the DT tried to focus down that pylon, but, oh, well, sending these uh, probes around to the DT, not making him chase him around. I feel like losing a couple more workers than he really needed to over there. Yeah, Ooh. that's for sure. Uh, he even gets the sentry here, and yeah, okay, he needed to buy time for the oracle, which is taking its, you know, it's, it's taking its time getting out, but it's still, uh, I don't know, he could have played Ring Around the Rosie maybe a little bit more. It is revealed, but hey, there is a second DT, and you just use the energy of the oracle, so, uh-oh, this is when you wish you had the old revelation on the oracle. 
Yeah, this is where it gets really awkward. At the same time, Neeb trying to use these Phoenix that he has on the other side of the map to equalize a little bit in damage. Uh, killing off a couple of workers here and there, and uh, not doing a terrible job with that, but oh, this DT. This is, this is becoming a bit much. Yeah, uh, again, like not quite like I just got to tap out here and now there's no way to come back, but this has certainly gotten Drogo a lead in workers, and uh, his third base is now well-timed with Neebs as well, so. Oh, uh, God, another DT is out. Oh, God, just one at a time. Well, now he has two Oracles and an Observer, so I hope the God doesn't do as much damage. Ah, oh, oh, jeez. He's not going to have a revelation for another five seconds observer. at least? Okay, yeah, observer. Observer's okay. finally, yeah. Okay. It's all good. Don't panic. 25 workers, though. Oh, damn. Ugh. These uh, these Phoenixes have tried their best to uh, do the same type of damage, but it's just not destined to be. And now Neeb is in a ton of trouble. He's already down 1-0. It's a very different game than last game, but one that Drogo is in complete control of. Yeah, these Phoenixes can only lift so much. Uh, it, take, it takes time. It takes time before you're ready for that next set of reps, but unfortunately Neeb does not have that time as the... Warp Prism going to be coming out very soon for Petit Drogo. The Gateway is finishing up, and he's going to be potentially positioned to start putting on the pressure. But here come the Oracles, trying to equalize some of that damage. Uh, there's the Mothership Core. One well-placed pylon is going to scare them away. Uh, still, I mean, it's it's nice to get some kills. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, really quite evening up, even at the cost of the Oracle. But that's where the army now invades, and I'm not sure Neve has a good enough response to save his third. Okay, I thought maybe he was going to be able to save his main, but that might also not be the case. Yeah, even if the sentry was in position to force the ramp, Link was researched, so Petit Drogo gets up into the main base. Going to be able to snipe off the entire army. GG gets called. Petit Drogo taking two in a row. Yes, he is. Oh, 